And so again, thank you very much. Thank you very much for your support and for giving. Come on, go ahead. Give the Lord a hand clap. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. In the book of Mark, chapter 8. Mark, chapter 8. I want to minister uh, this morning and, and maybe realign some of our hearts as much of modern Christianity has us moving in the wrong direction. And, and I say us, they don't have me moving anywhere because if it's not the word of God, I will simply not follow it. And I would give you this advice. It's only going to get worse as we move towards uh, deeper into the end times. You need to get this word in your heart. You need to know it without reading it. When, you, when somebody else reads it, you need to know what the next verse is going to say before we even get there. You need to understand not just well enough to memorize it, but to understand what the passages are saying to you because uh, uh, many deceivers are, are in the land. And some of the biggest, most prominent national ministries, I'm just going to say it bluntly, are working full time for Satan. Under the name of Jesus, but they're working full time for Satan. If they have abandoned this book, they're of the devil. If they have abandoned the scriptures, they are antichrists. And they're leading so many people astray and away from the things of God. And so this morning, I want to share with you just a very fundamental message uh, that all of us need to remember because we can sometimes be tugged. The culture can tug us along if we're not careful to put our heels in and say, no, I'm, I'm staying here with Jesus. And so in the book of Mark, uh, chapter 8, Jesus is speaking and he makes a very simple statement. It's a question in actuality. He says, what shall it profit a man, verse 36, what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? What shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for the day. We thank you for your goodness, your faithfulness, Lord. We'd ask you now, Master, that the offering that we receive today here in the worship room over across the webcast, Lord, that you would bless the families, the individuals that give in support of this ministry. A double blessing on all of those that help the poor Christians in Pakistan, that you would bless those lives. And Father, I'd ask you as well that you would help me this morning to make a certain sound into the ears of your people, to blow the trumpet in Zion, anoint the hearts and the ears of the people to receive the engrafted word. Lord, that we might all walk away with a better understanding of that which is required of us as Christians. We pray it in Jesus' name. We thank you for it. And the church said, amen. amen. What shall it profit a man to gain the whole world? The whole world and everything in it, all of its riches, all of its wealth, all of its excitement, at the expense of his own eternal soul. You see, if it were possible that you could have everything in the world, it could all belong to you, it is only temporal. It's about to pass away. But you and I, our souls are eternal. They, they will last forever and ever and ever. Both, both all men and all women on the planet, both saints and sinners, all people will live eternally. The question is where will you live? And Jesus himself asked this question, what, what profit is it if you were to gain everything that you wanted at the expense of your own soul. We live certainly in the Western world in a very materialistic society. Uh, everything that's put before us, all of our Hollywood stars, all of our sports heroes, all of our political pundits, all of them, they, they, they tug on us and pull us towards the acquisition of wealth, getting more things, another widget, another gadget, another gadget. Another iPhone, another Tesla, another house. I got a house, I need a bigger house. I got a phone, I need a double phone. 
I, I, I got good things. I need better things. When in fact the simple message of the Bible is be content with such things as you have. Now it doesn't mean you can't have nice things. There's no problem with that. But learn to be content with that. Learn to say, if it's working for you, I drive, I don't even know what year it is. I think it's a 2019 or 18 Toyota pickup. That's what I drive. I could go buy a Mercedes. You know, preachers like Mercedes and Cadillacs. <laughs> you know why I don't do it? Because I don't want you to see me doing that. Because if I do it, it's going to make you feel like you need to do it. And so I try to keep myself very normal so that I'm not giving, sending you in a false direction. Somebody say, you drive a, a, a truck and it's that old? Yeah. And my payment, that's my payment. Every month, this is how much I pay. <laughs> But when we have this mindset that we're always reaching out for something else, and don't get me wrong this morning, if you need another car, go buy a car. There's nothing wrong with that. If, if, you're, if your family has blown up and you have more children and you gotta buy a, a, a house with more room, go, go do that if you can afford it. But if there's not a need to do more, why are you trying to acquire more things? You know, we, we had the situation come up in Pakistan, and I, I don't know any backstories on anybody, but I'm sure there are people that probably thought it would be wonderful to, to give two or three or four or five hundred dollars towards that, but I don't have it. And many times we're not able to be a blessing to someone else because we've already consumed it on ourselves. <laughs> It's going to be like this all morning. Just get used to it. <laughs> Paul speaks on this uh, in the book of 1 Timothy. And he's speaking first about those who would lead God's people in another direction. Of, of not really being um, satisfied. Always reaching out for more. And he begins in verse 3 of 1 Timothy chapter 6, beginning with verse 3. Uh, Paul writes, if any man teach otherwise, <laughs> and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the doctrine. Now, these are the, Lord, the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. The doctrine is contained in this book which is according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strife of words, whereof come envy, strife, railings, and evil surmisings, get this, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth. Now what Paul is defining right here are ministers. He's talking about preachers who are destitute of the truth. The word destitute means impoverished. It means in severe lack. And if you just let your mind span across the ministers you may have been seen on YouTube or on one, some of the different platforms and listen to the words that they are preaching to God's people, you find out it is not in this book. It's humanistic psychology. It's something to make you feel good about yourself. Because if you feel good about yourself, you will give more money. And you will become addicted to the person that makes you feel good about yourself. But I'm not here today to make you feel good about yourself. I'm here to tell you what thus saith the Lord. These are the words of eternal life. And if we will, uh, uh, in, 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 if we will grab these words, if we will embrace these words... And let them begin to live through us. We'll find a satisfaction in life. That's over and above anything you could ever know. I, I'm still, I, I'm only 66 years old. But I'm in fairly good shape. Fairly active. And, uh, but I, I, Six Flags and, and Disney World, they, they mean nothing to me. I, I've been in Dallas, I don't know, over 30 years. I've never been to Six Flags once. I mean, who's winning the next ball game or the basketball game? I, I don't even know what season it is. I have no, it doesn't touch me at all. 
All of my joy comes from this. And you will find if you would just let go of where the world is pulling you to. They're pulling you. Listen, the, the people on the news at night that are giving you the sports news, they are evangelists for the world. They are evangelizing you into the world's mindset. And many of us are drunk, absolutely drunk on what they have been preaching to us. We, 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 we sit and we let them speak their, their world into our lives. And it takes not only does it take time away from really getting the words of life, but it puts us in a mindset that we're now moving towards something that is contrary to what's going to truly make you happy. I don't care how much money you have. Hit the lottery. Go ahead and hit it. Hit the big one. It won't make you happy. <laughs> It, it won't give you, it won't give you job. It won't make your marriage better. It won't make your kids act better. It'll only make everything worse. But if you could just simply be content, find contentment in the little things in life. <laughs> I uh, have a little garden in my backyard. I'm not really a farmer, don't know much about it. I'm trying to learn. <laughs> but I put down some radishes t some time ago. And you know what I did yesterday? With my granddaughter, I went out and I harvested the radishes. That's life. That's what God actually gave us. Everything else, all this digital stuff, all of it, that's, God didn't give you that. Now, use it how you have to. That's the world that we live in, but that's not what's going to make you happy. That's going to make you addicted because of the dopamine releases that the social platforms give you. And you'll find yourself going back again and again. We're like, we're like junkies. We got to have short clips of information. We're like junkies. Let, let, do I have anything on my phone? Did anybody talk to me? Did somebody like me? Did somebody give me a heart on my phone? <laughs> and, and, we, and we live like, like junkies. When in fact, God wants us just to be able to enjoy just simple things in life. In an analog world, which means that's where reality really is based in the analog, not in the digital. <laughs> so he says that he is proud, knowing nothing but doting about questions and strifes of words, where of coming envy, strife, railings and surmising, perverse disputing of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth. And they suppose it is their supposition that gain is godliness. And you can almost hear, you know, people will lift up Elon Musk. He's a, he's a billionaire. It's like, oh, man, he's like, hey, this is our guy here. He, he's a billionaire. Or, or name the next billionaire. This, this is our guy. He's got billions, man. We like him. But Paul is saying, no, those are not your guys. The gain is not godliness. First of all, they ain't going to give you a penny. Not a penny. But the very mindset that we have that if I could just acquire more stuff, I, I could live this, this dream life. Oh, I'll, I'll have this wonderful house and I'll have uh, me and, me and my, my spouse will sit out on the porches and drink our morning coffee. Honey, you can do that on the balcony of your apartment. Amen. 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 So I say, well, it's not a topical resort. Well, put a plant out there. <laughs> Amen. Because it's not, it's not the place that you're at. It's the company that you're in. That's what makes it enjoyable. But Paul turns around in verse 6 and he contradicts all that is said. He says, but godliness with contentment is great gain. Meaning that if we can learn to be content with such things that we have, that's, that's the greatest gain that, that we're going to be able to have. They suppose that gain is godliness. Here's what he says, from such withdraw thyself. And the reason godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world and it is certain that we can carry nothing out. Now that ought to be the heads up for all of us. You came in without a dollar. I don't care how much you accumulate. You're going out without a dollar. <laughs> it's like the old story, the, the rich man died and they said, well, how much did he leave? <laughs> Honey, he left it all. <laughs> 
He didn't take not a penny with him. And you can, you can go get, your, get the most modern stuff, go over the top, sell your good car, go get you a booming Tesla, $400,000 Tesla. Go get it. You ain't driving it to heaven. <laughs> now, listen, it's not wrong to have nice stuff. I have nice stuff. My wife and I, we live in a nice little house, two bedrooms. <laughs> we built it ourselves. We built it intentionally with two bedrooms because... We didn't want nobody coming by. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and we're just, as, we're just as happy. But if Jesus were to come right now, I say, Satan, here's the keys. There's some cookies and milk on the counter. You can have it all. You can have it all. Amen. Every day, I thank God for it. It's very comfortable for me, but, but this is not where I spend my, my abode, my eternal abode. This, this is not it. And so I'm not letting myself get attached to the things of this world, saints. Listen, we're leaving. We're leaving. And someone will say, well, I'm young and I've got a long life. Well, maybe. Maybe not. You may die young or Jesus may come tomorrow. We don't know. But the thing is, don't over entwine ourselves in the things of this world. And here's how you can tell if you're over leveraged into the things of this world. Where is your credit card balance? It's telling on you. It's telling on you. And if that thing is more than what you can pay off on, 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 at the end of the month, that means you are being pimped by the banks. It's kind of direct, isn't it? But they're using you. You give, you put your paycheck in their bank, they give you 0.02% interest. You charge something on that car, they charge you 18% interest. <laughs> you, you're being pimped. He says, godliness with contentment is great, is great gain. We've carried nothing into this world. It's certain that we can carry nothing out. But having food and clothing, let us with these things be content. That's the second time in three sentences he's mentioned contentment. They're just simply being content. But they that will be rich... <laughs> They that will be rich. You know why you play the lottery? Because you want to be rich. That's why. Is everybody with me this morning? Is this too hard? Am I being, is this too hard? People play the lottery because they want to be rich. When, when the lottery came to Texas, I sat on a survey. It was like uh, they were seeing what the odds should be for people to be interested in it. And so I sat on that, and I know what the odds are. You can get hit by lightning three times before you get the lottery once. Those are your odds. But people give dollar, dollar, dollar. People go in, here's, here's $50. Give me $50 worth of tickets. They run over to the corner, scratch them all off. <laughs> they ain't want nothing. <laughs> it hadn't won anything but they want to be rich and they're investing in a system that can never make them happy he's saying here again but they that will be rich who, who is their will their desire to be wit, rich fall into temptation and a snare meaning that that mindset is a trap it's a trap that's going to bind you up. And into many foolish and hurtful lusts which plunge men into destruction and into perdition. You see, all of those things, when you acquire all of these many things, they in themselves become addictive. What if you had to give up your nice a phone. Now, I've got a pretty nice one, too. My, it's a Note 20. It's kind of old, but it's, it still works pretty well. But what if you had to give up your, your wonderful phone and go back to just a little flip phone, just the little flip phones? <laughs> what, what, what if you had to give up the nice car that perhaps that you drive and you, you had to just get one on the back lot because things got bad? Would you be able to still serve Jesus Christ? Or would your total self-image be demolished? How do you identify? Do you identify yourself by the things that you possess? 
See, Satan is willing. We, we learned this from the temptation in the wilderness. Satan is willing to make a deal with you. He told Jesus, he took them to the pinnacle and showed them all the kingdoms of this world and the glory of them and said, all of this is yours if you'll just fall down and worship me. Satan will make a deal with you. But it's a deal for your eternal soul. And all he's offering is you temporal garbage, which quite frankly is already yours. The meek shall inherit the earth. <laughs> And if we allow this mindset to set upon us that we're always achieving, I need bigger, I need better, I need more shiny, I need the latest, the greatest, it ends up causing an addiction in your life that over time, not immediately, over time, will skinny down your relationship with Jesus Christ. Let's look at it in the book of Mark chapter 10. And when Jesus was gone forth, I'm reading with verse 17. When Jesus was gone forth in the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I might inherit eternal life? Now this young man is asking the right question. He's got the right attitude and he's asking the right person. Everything is right that he's doing thus far. What must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, and that is God. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Defraud not. Honor thy father and mother. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these things have I observed from my youth. And Jesus, beholding him, loved him and said unto him, one thing thou lackest, <laughs> go thy way and sell your iPhone and your Tesla, your 4,500 square foot house, and give it to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come, take up the cross, and follow me. And he was sad at that saying, and he walked away grieved. <laughs> now, this is what the accumulation of riches do to us. Jesus is saying, hey, you can walk with me. You can follow me. You, but you can't bring all this junk with you. But you, you can follow after the master. And when he heard, what do you mean? Get rid of my stuff? All of the stuff I've spent my life acquiring. You say, hey, give it all away. How will I keep my Instagram updated? <laughs> and the scripture says he walked away from Jesus Christ. He walked away from eternal life because he wanted to hold on to his things. This is the very meaning of this story being in the Bible. It's to let us know that the acquisition of things is addictive. It's a snare. It's an entrapment. It can, it can grab a hold of us to the extent that we can no longer follow after Jesus Christ. And I want you to notice something. It says that he went away grieved. You read the rest of the story. Jesus did not chase him down. He let him go. You want to go? Go. You're not bound. You have to want to be with Jesus. And someone said, well, Jesus wouldn't ask you for that. Uh, I beg your pardon. You'll be surprised what Jesus asked you for. You'll be surprised the sacrifices. We're so spoiled in the Western world, we think that we're just, you know, <laughs> we're just absolutely spoiled. But most of the saints around the world, they don't have a Tesla and an iPhone. They, they don't even have running water or AC. And yet these things that are creature comforts, and thank God they're blessings, thank God for them, but we can't let them prevent us from truly walking with Jesus Christ. Am I making sense today? It says he went away grieved because, the word for in the King James is because, because he had great possessions. See, in his mind, he had already acquired a bunch of stuff. He came to Jesus. He just thought he could add Jesus to his collection of stuff. 
But, but Jesus will never be one of many. <laughs> He will never be uh, j just a bobblehead Jesus you put on your dashboard that you can show off. I'm one of them. That's not the real Jesus. The real Jesus says, uh, sell all that you have, take up my cross, and, 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 and lay down your life, and then follow me. That's the real Jesus. Look back when Matthew was called, the uh, apostle Matthew, when he was called, he was a tax collector. The Bible says he was sitting at receipt of customs. What that means is the tax collectors had a contract with the Roman government that they were to collect taxes. Here's how much the Roman government was supposed to have, but the tax collector, could ta he could tax as much as he wanted to, to take care of his own needs and to pay Rome their part. And so tax collectors were hated. They, they, they were hated by the, uh, uh, the Jewish people. And so sitting at receipt of customs means he had bags of money under the table that he had already received customs. There's money on the table. But when Jesus came by and said, follow me, the Bible said he left all. <laughs> he left it all. He got up from the table. He left the table, the money, the workers, everything. And the contract with Rome, he left it all. And he followed after Jesus Christ. Somebody says, well, man, mate, was that really a good deal? His name will be inscribed on one of the 12 foundations of the new Jerusalem through eternity future. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Saints, it's very easy for us to look at the little widgets and gadgets and gadgets that are offered to us. But Jesus said, take heed to yourself. Man's life does not consist in the abundance of things that he possesses because in him is life. Our life comes from him. It doesn't come from our stuff. Now, I want you to understand, if you have nice stuff, God's not mad at you. God wants you to prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. That, that's God's will for your life. But it, it, it's like the, 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 the people you see, the, the rap artist. If you ever see them like on a, a, a video or something, they got, they got weighted gold hanging around their necks. They got gold on all their fingers. It's across all their teeth. I mean, they look like the golden calf. <laughs> and this is the mentality that's being pushed upon us. This is what's put before us in, in an effort to try to make us gravitate towards it. And it's a trap. Be content with nothing. Be content with little things. I can, I can afford to get on a, a cruise ship and go wherever me and my wife want to go. We, we can afford it. We can pay it. Go captain's quarters all the way. We can afford it. You know, I'm content at home at my desk writing my next commentary. I, I'm, I'm just finishing up the commentaries of John. Just finishing them up. And... and uh, I, I have them where it's ready to be proofed by other people. And I, I went back to the next day and I realized there's a hole in, in my daily activity because usually I would sit down and, oh, the joy of working through the scriptures and delving into them. But the commentary is done. <laughs> there's not another verse to look at. So I thought, well, I'm going to have to start another one. The simple little things in life. You know what? They're free. They're absolutely free. You don't have to pay a lot of money. You don't have to get, get on an airplane, no TSA, none of that. Just living a simple life. Amen. I hope, that, I hope I've said something that makes sense to you this morning. Gain is not godliness. Godliness with contentment is very great gain. Amen. Would you bow your heads, please, all over the room? Father, we love you and we thank you. I've done my best to make a certain sound in this place to let your people know that our lives are to be simple lives, lives lived with a content heart. How can we give thanks to you if we're not content with what we have? Father, we just worship you today. We ask you to take these words and penetrate our minds. Convict us, O oh God. Convict our hearts. 
And help us in every way, Lord, to turn away from those that are destitute of the truth and to turn back to the simplicity which is in Christ. Come on all over the room. If you're able this morning, would you stand to your feet if you're able? And why don't you just reach out yourself? You know where you're at. You know what your challenges are. Just reach out and ask your Father, help me. Help me, God, to get back to a simple life. Help me not to get caught up in the hustle and the bustle of this modern world, but, Lord, to have you in the full focus of my intention and to be very content with the things that I have. Come on, just reach out to the Lord, won't you? Just reach out and help him to help, ask him to help you in your life. Father God, we thank you so much for the things that you have blessed us with. We thank you because you have blessed us abundantly, God. And Father God, we pray that we know that we are in this world, but that we're here in this world, but we're not of this world. Help us to be content, Father God, like Paul did, like Paul said in Philippians, that he's learned to be content in, in whatever situation it is. We thank you, God, for your blessings, and we want to always give you the glory for what we have. Help us, Father God, to get more into your word and, mo and learn more of you. The more we learn of you, the less are the things that we want. And I thank you, and I give you praise in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen and amen. We thank you for coming out this morning. For those of you that uh, are joining us online, we thank you for coming out. And we thank you for those of you who are here in-house. If it's your first time, we're glad to have you. Hope that you enjoyed it. And um, if you haven't had a chance to give, there's still time to help us in supporting our ministry. And we thank you for those who supported the uh, Pakistan water well so that they can have a, a well. Thank you so much. And... We will be having a Wednesday night Bible study at 7 o'clock here. And we'll, we are studying in the book of James. We look forward to seeing you. And at that, you are dismissed. Thank you.